Dear class, uh, this week we're going to continue to talk a little bit more about autocoid and autocoid antagonists. So these are the local hormone we talked about, uh, prostaglandins, histamine, and serotonin uh, belong to a group of endogenous uh, compounds called autocoid. Uh, these heterogeneous substances have widely different structures and pharmacologic activities. Autocoid antagonists are compounds that uh, inhibit the synthesis of certain autocoids or uh, that interfere with the interactions with uh, their interaction with receptors. Prostaglandin are unsaturated fatty acid derivatives that act on uh, tissue in which they are synthesized and are rapidly metabolized to inactive product at the site of action. We've seen prostaglandin analog used in uh, glaucoma, but we reduce the uh, intraocular pressure. Prostaglandin used to protect the uh, gastric lining, stomach lining, protect against gastric ulcer. In this case here, another example of prostaglandin is used in combination with uh, methylpristone, which is also known as U486. A synthetic steroid with antiprogestational effect. So, if a U486 is used, followed by 48 hours later uh, by the synthetic prostaglandin E1 uh, misoprostol, uh, this regimen results in complete abortion rate greater than uh, 95%. Histamine is a chemical messenger mostly generated in mast cells that mediates a wide range of cellular responses including allergic and inflammatory reaction, gastric acid secretion, and neurotransmission in parts of the brain. Histamine has no clinical application but agents that interfere with the action of histamine, antihistamine, have important therapeutic applications. Histamine occurs in practically all tissue, but it is unevenly distributed with high amounts found in lung, skin, and gastrointestinal tract. It is found at high concentration in mast cells or basal fields. Histamine also occurs as a component of venoms, venoms and in secretions from insect sting. Histamine is an amine formed by the carboxylation of the amino acid histidine by histidine decarboxylase. In mast cells, histamine is stored in granules. If histamine is not stored, it is rapidly inactivated by amine oxidase enzyme. The release of histamine from tissues is caused by the destruction of cells as a result of cold, bacterial toxin, bee sting venom, or trauma. Allergies and anaphylaxis can also trigger release of histamine. Histamine release is in response to various stimuli exert its effect by binding to one or more of the four types of histamine receptor, H1, H2, H3, H4. H1 and H2 receptor are widely expressed and are the target of clinically useful drug, whereas H3 and H4 receptor are expressed only of in a few cell type at their role in drug action are unclear. So they mediate it through G-protein couple receptor uh, like the inositol triphosphate and diisoglycerol. Histamine receptor are important in producing smooth muscle contraction and increased capillary permeability. Histamine promotes vasodilation of small blood vessel by causing vascular endothelium to release nitric oxide. Also, histamine can enhance the secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines in several cell types and in local tissue. On the other hand, histamine stimulates the parietal cell in the stomach causing an increase in acid secretion via activation of H2 receptor. Stimulation of this receptor enhances the production of cyclic uh, AMP by adenylylcyclase. This figure here just uh, illustrate the uh, location of H1 and H2 receptor and their function. 
So the role of histamine in allergy and anaphylaxis. The symptoms resulting from intravenous injection of histamine are similar to those associated with anaphylactic shock and allergic reaction. This include contraction of the airway, smooth muscle, stimulation of secretion, dilation and increased permeability of the capillaries, and stimulation of sensory nerve ending. Symptoms associated with allergy and anaphylactic shock result from the release of certain mediators from their storage sites. Such mediators include histamine, serotonin, leukotrienes, and eosinophil chemotactic factor of anaphylaxis. In some cases, this causes a localized allergic reaction, producing, for example, action on the skin or respiratory tract. Under other conditions, this uh, mediator may cause a full-blown anaphylactic response. It is thought that the difference between these two situations result from differences in the site from which mediators are released and in their rates of release. For example, if the release of histamine is slow enough to permit its inactivation before it enters the bloodstream, a localized allergic reaction result. However, if histamine releases too fast for inactivation to be efficient, a full-blown anaphylactic reaction occurs. The term antihistamine with a modifying adjective refer to a classic H1 receptor blocker. This contrasts with the action of chromalin, uh, which inhibit the release of histamine from mast cells. The old first-generation drugs are still widely uh, used because they are effective and inexpensive. However, most of these drugs penetrate the central nervous system and cause sedation. Furthermore, they tend to interact with other receptors, producing a variety of unwanted adverse effects. By contrast, the second-generation agents are specific for H1 receptor and because they carry polar groups, they do not penetrate the blood-brain barrier, causing less CNS depression than the first-generation drugs. The duration of action of many oral H1 antihistamine is at least 24 hours, allowing one daily dosing. H1 block receptor blockers are useful in treating allergy caused by antigen acting on immunoglobulin E antibody sensitized sensitized mast cells. Epinephrine has action on smooth muscle that are opposite to those of histamine, and it acts at different receptors. Therefore, epinephrine is the drug of choice in treating systemic anaphylaxis and other conditions that involve massive release of histamine. Glucocorticoids show greater anti-inflammatory effect than the H1 antihistamine. In motion sickness and nausea, Along with anti-muscarinic agent scopolamine, certain H1 receptor blocker uh, such as diphenhydramine, um, meclizine, hydroxyzine are the most effective agent for prevention of the symptom of motion sickness. The anti-emetic action of these medications seems to be due uh, to their blockade of central H1 and muscarinic uh, receptor. Somnifacian. Although they are not the medication of choice, many first-generation antihistamines such as diphenhydramine have strong sedative property and are used in treatment of insomnia. The most frequently observed adverse uh, reaction is sedation. Other central actions include tinnitus, fatigue, dizziness, low vision, dry mouth. Interaction of H1 receptor blockers with other drugs can cause serious cons consequences such as potentiation of the effect of all other CNS depressants including alcohol. The first generation antihistamine, diphenhydramine and other have considerable anticholinergic action. This action would decrease the effectiveness of cholinesterase inhibitor in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Although antagonists of histamine H2 receptor block the action of a histamine at all H2 receptor, their 
chief clinical use is as inhibitor of gastric acid secretion in the treatment of ulcer and heartburns.